Good morning and welcome to New York Crypto Talk. Thanks for joining me for today's Saturday's weekly spotlight series. Today I will be doing the third part of my Keeping Safe in Crypto series. Last week I reviewed cold storage hardware wallets and I will link that at the end of this video today. Today I'll be focusing in on two-factor authentication as well as security in the form of VPN and a special method mentioned in the end that will be available hopefully in the coming weeks. So without further ado, two-factor authentication. What is two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication and why is it important? Well, if you have ever logged onto any of the crypto exchanges, this is just an example and you have seen this authenticator code, you are doing it right. If you have not seen this before, you should definitely start looking into it as of this video. So what is two-factor authentication? Two-factor authentication is being able to utilize an existing password using a secure password. Check my previous videos about that on using a much more secure password as well as a application that can be on your device as well as a hardware authenticator code. So most sites, crypto exchanges offer two-factor authentication in the form of Google Authenticator. That is the most common one that people know about. It is a random code that is generated on your phone and it is available both on the Apple Store and Google Play Store. And you can get these applications and basically what it does is it get, derives a generic number specific to the site. When you sign up for Bitrix Binance, Cryptos or any other site, it will allow you to put in the code specific to your account and specific to your device software for a Google Authenticator. It will automatically generate a six digit authenticator code that lasts for one minute and this code will then generate over and over and over again you have to utilize your phone to get that code so this is what it looks like in google authenticator if you are not familiar with the application basically depending on the different sites that you have you will have multiple codes for all the different sites that you go to and it will automatically generate and it will run out so depending on where you are and you might open the app and it might only have a couple of seconds left you might have to wait for it to generate a new code so why do I recommend two-factor authentication? Well, because most people who have just generic passwords are prone to more security risks. They can get hacked. Their access can be utilized and without their knowledge. By using Google Authenticator, you basically the only people who can utilize that existing platform is person who has your password as well as your device. Obviously, the issue with devices is if you lose your device, you no longer have that code. There is some issue with the Google Authenticator app because you actually need the device. You can restore from a seed when you initially create the account, but obviously most people don't do that and it is something that is a risk, an inherent risk. Obviously, if you have some type of mobile device you should always use fingerprint identification or a code to get into your device you should never leave your device unlocked obviously that's another step you should always take in security but one way of getting around this is using an app called Authy. Authy is also a two-factor authentication app similar to Google Authenticator it doesn't really show up on most sites but pretty much any site that uses Google Authenticator can also use Authy Authy is not driven by your hardware. You can actually install it on multiple devices. So there are downsides and upsides of using Google Authenticator versus Authy. Obviously, you can have multiple devices running off the app, both your Android, your iOS, your Windows and Apple Watch, even your desktop. So obviously, there is an inherent risk with that as well. So it really comes down to what you would prefer. Authy obviously is really interesting so that you can actually utilize it on multiple devices. You can deauthorize devices as well as authorize them as you get them. So if you lose your device, you can quickly deauthorize that phone and then authorize your new phone that you get. 
obviously if someone gets access to your Authy account, they can do the same thing. So there's inherent risk with both things. Obviously Google Authenticator is what most people utilize because it is the mainstream two-factor authentication software. And generally if you lose your device, you're just gonna have to deal with a lot of issues in the first place. So just make sure it is safe, it's secure, and you utilize it because it should be on every single site that you use. You should always use two-factor authentication. Also, not many crypto sites have the ability to utilize it, but if you guys have a ledger or a trezor, I had mentioned this previously in the last video, Fido U2F, Fido Universal Second Factor Authentication basically is an option that is available for both the ledger and the trezor, and basically it will provide you with a hardware-based numeric code so this can be used for more traditional sites it is not really available on many cryptocurrency exchanges but it is much more secure much much more secure than Authy and google authenticator because it is an offline device and you need to be able to have that device available with you to actually access the site you plug in the device you choose fido utf just like you would do for bitcoin and ethereum and it will give you a code specific to log in as well as there are dis specific devices that are for utf it is called yubikey they are the biggest distributor of the utf software or utf hardware and you can buy utf devices directly from them there's one where you literally plug in a device and press a button and it will authenticate for you there are ones that are actually nfc plus usb based so they're kind of a combination which i think is interesting so definitely things you should look into when it comes to securing your computer your assets your your software anything from google to facebook to anything that you use you should always be safe so definitely check out utf devices and any sites that might utilize the software to be able to access your information two-factor authentication there's google authenticator that is available on ios and android devices that you can get authy which is available on android ios apple watch computers it's windows software that you can definitely get as well check that one out fido utf which is available on your ledger your trezor and newbie keys for just generalized access and then moving to the second part of the series is the security in the internet so i've mentioned browsers already i will eventually talk about more enhanced browsers and more enhanced software in my last part of the series but this is on VPN. I won't go into specific VPN services because I have noticed that many sites do get paid directly from these VPN services to get featured on their site, get ranked on their site, to get chosen as the top VPN. So you will see a lot of comparisons and a lot of differentiation between what they think is the best. I just went to PCMag.com and you can see the different options that are available. I'm not gonna go into it, but just to be safe in the internet with net neutrality coming around especially in the united states obviously security is a big piece of the pie and hacking and things along those lines there it's prevalent so just be safe out there vpn offers security it offers connections it offers a lot of things that you might not normally get with traditional isp services so definitely look into vpn i'm not going to go too much into the vpn and what it actually does and what you can actually utilize it for but there is a lot of advanced features ad blocking making sure you're secure in the age and there's a lot of things that are kind of kind of packaged in with the product that make it a lot more enhanced, a lot more secure for your internet experience. So my last pick of the day for security, and it is going to be more on the decentralized web, and it is one of my favorite projects, Substratum. So Substratum is something that I would definitely recommend once they are available in the mainstream. The Hopefully the public beta will be available in the next week. Net neutrality comes into play next Tuesday on next Monday, April 23rd, so I'm hoping for a release of Substratum Public Beta. Moving forward in Q2, we should hopefully have the actual live product of Substratum, and it is just something that it will help keep people more secure. You're gonna be using a platform that's gonna be a lot more centric to the people in the industry utilizing blockchain 
utilizing cryptocurrency exchanges. So I definitely think that Substratum is going to be uh, an option or an alternative to a VPN service. Obviously, it is going to be a free service, but it is something that people should be looking into when it comes to being secure in the crypto space. So definitely look into Substratum. There's a lot of security-based functionality if you check out some of their sublock talks. They, they do have a lot of encryption. They have a lot of things that are going to be using for protecting the people on the platform. So I really think that Substratum is definitely going to be a key player when it comes to just making sure you're safe on the internet, especially when you're dealing with cryptocurrency. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this. Next week, I will be doing my deep dive into my most secure video my advanced series which is going to be a offline cold storage linux based software utilizing tor browsers key pass software and just keeping your main device offline so you can send offline transactions so there's different ways of being able to do it so i hope you guys will tune in for that please like subscribe hit the notification bell and more videos will come Please let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.